When I see a 7 Deadly Sins game, I get worried. The trailers look great, but we're talking about an anime that even if you and me, we love it, like even if it's our favorite anime of all time, it's not as popular as something like Dragon Ball or Naruto or One Piece. And looking at the history of anime games, there have been some pretty bad Naruto, Dragon Ball and One Piece games in the past. And we're talking about the most popular anime of all time, meaning that the games they make based on those anime are also the games with the most money. Seven Deadly Sins is a tiny anime in comparison, so one of my main concerns going into this was look at this big roster. Do, do these characters even play any different? Are they just clones? Do they just play the same and uh, have different skins for their moves? And today we try to shine a light on that. Are there different gameplay styles for each character? My name's Globku and let's find out. So there's a couple of things we can look at to answer this question. Do, do characters play uniquely, differently, and not just have different names on their special moves that kind of do the same thing? If you want to understand the basics of how this combat system works, I recommend you check out IGN's video, because they go into dual mode and uh, have two battles between Meliodas and Gil Thunder, so you can just see two full matches of what a random duel in Seven Deadly Sins Knights of Britannia is. Judging from that footage, the, the movement is a little bit janky, and I I saw some differences in gameplay. Nothing's too significant though. I feel like the style of gameplay is gonna end up being very similar even though some of the moves are unique to each character. But for a developer to make a 7 Deadly Sins game and put so many characters into it on the first go, you have to be suspicious. You have to wonder, are they really unique? Because making unique characters costs money, costs development time. So we have to keep our expectations a little low and be cautious. Now, at the end of last year, the web website was updated with some descriptions of the characters and uh, Gematsu.com has translated those descriptions and they talk a little bit about the playstyles of Diane, Arthur Pendragon, Twigo, Gil Thunder, Jericho and Guilla. So we're gonna read those descriptions together and also try to figure out what they mean because it's not obvious and with that information we'll see if they are truly different from one another. Alright, starting with Diane, she has easy to use standard attacks whose movement is rather slow but can be recommend to any player. All right, I'm not gonna get caught up in translation typos. Can be recommend to any player. There is a one tempo pause when using her double hammer technique, but because it is not hindered by distance and obstacles, it is effective when it catches at the enemy off guard. What? There is a one tempo pause. I'm guessing like there's a, a startup animation, something like that, something to indicate that, hey, a special attack is coming. It's very common in these uh, type of anime brawlers. The more powerful the attack, the bigger the animation there is before the attack lands. So it's the sort of situation where, hey, this attack is powerful, but it's going to take a while and the enemy can see it. At the same time, it seems that the technique goes through obstacles and it's not hindered by distance. Does that mean it's uh, like a long range technique? Okay, so Diane's technique has a little bit of wind up animation, has a long distance and goes through obstacles. That sounds like every single ultimate attack in an anime game. It is effective when it catches the enemy off guard. Isn't every attack though? All right, that's the description on Diane. I'm not feeling the distinction yet. Like you look at IGN's gameplay and Meliodas ultimate attack also has a huge distance and the wind up animation. Gil Thunders, uh, thunder lightning rings from the sky. I'm not sure if that's also a long distance attack, but it definitely looks that way. And looking at the gameplay, nothing, even normal attacks are hindered by obstacles because the houses are just, they just crumble when you touch them with the sword. I don't know, Diane. You're not selling me on this argument. Let's move on to Arthur Pendragon. An easy to use character with a standard attack set. Great start. Standard attack sets. Exactly what I wanted. And the ability to counter direct attacks. Okay, here's something interesting. So Arthur can counter attacks. When using counters, be sure to aim for the proper timing. Okay, so there are timed counters. Good. Such as during rush style attacks and attacks with big preliminary actions. What? 
So I'm not entirely sure what rush style attacks are, but uh, typically these mean like attacks that uh, are very straightforward, like from a distance the character rushes at you and then they attack and because you can see the character rushing, maybe it's telling you, hey, this is a good time to use a counter or attacks with big preliminary actions like, yeah, attacks with the wind up animation. I'm not sure if this will counter ultimate attacks, but it does sound that way and that makes Arthur kind of a unique character or when the opponent runs out of magical power and can only use direct attacks. Yeah, because while characters have uh, magical power, they, they will be able to use some ranged attacks and I'm guessing Arthur cannot counter those. He's able to counter from melee range uh, from the sounds of it. Okay, Pendragon is kind of selling me on this. Moving on to Twigo, a character with long reaching attacks. Particularly the whirlwind technique is his main strength since it has a wide range both frontward and horizontally. I guess that means it's another long range attack but it also covers a long horizontal area. Or maybe it means that it's, it's got a wide range vertically and horizontally. His aerial sword attack is also very powerful. He is a recommended character as he is easy for anyone to fight with. So far the only exception is is Arthur. Everyone else is kind of easy and recommended to, because they have standard attacks or whatever. When they talk about the whirlwind technique, again, I think they're talking about an ultimate attack that has a huge range. Like, it, it has a lot of frontward range, but also horizontal. So it's just to give it like a twist. Uh, next, Guild Thunder. We've actually seen some gameplay from IGN with this guy. An all-rounder with steady strength who can fight regardless of distance. That is true. Uh, he seems good in close range, he also has some uh, long range attacks, so sure, that's in line with what I've seen of the gameplay. His long distance attacks like Raiju no Tsuiso and Raiteni no Tetsui techniques can easily target opponents and his easy to connect Rai Meizan technique is uh, effective as an additional blow after a standard attack. Okay, so this guy seems to have like kind of all around strength. He can fight in melee, he can fight uh, from long range. Everyone can do sort of combos in this game and this guy also has an additional strike after the regular combo. Gil Thunder does make it sound like he's different from the other characters. I like it. Next up is Jericho. She has a high number of attacks and is recommended for combo lovers. Oh, that's me. I'm a combo lover. With her long distance shots and magical techniques that follow approaching and consecutively attacking the opponent. What? So she has long distance shots, but she also has a, a high number of attacks. So she's a combo girl. Maybe she also has combos from long range. That would be different for sure. But has magical techniques that follow approaching. English. These seem to be like the rush style techniques where you can just follow a target or approach very quickly. Is that what it means? Kematsu, and further pursuing with Mirage Step. Yeah, it seems like uh, she has a lot of pursuit techniques, but also long range attacks. This is actually not very common in these types of games. If a character is strong at a distance, developers usually don't give that character good uh, mobility stuff for her to get in close because there's no incentive, right? She's good from a distance. She's better than the opponent from a distance. Why would she ever want to get close? But she's also good at combos, so maybe that's why. You can get an unmatched sense of exhilaration if you know how to fight you Using the basics. That's the most Japanese sentence ever said. You can get an unmatched sense of exhilaration. Oh boy. Next, Gira. Since her handy shot attacks are easy to use, she is particularly like recommended for players early on. Who isn't? When it comes to long range combat, you will want to always remain conscious of fighting the opponent from a distance. Use her killer minded trap set technique to try and restrain the approaching opponent. I didn't expect Gira to be uh, a long range character, but it seems like that's the way it's gonna be. She also has traps, apparently, to trap the opponent. That might be useful to, to put in some distance between yourself and the enemy and then attack from a distance because that's what she does. And those are the characters on the website. I'm kind of convinced to be honest. I think a lot of the characters will be the same. I think not every single character in that roster will be super unique. As we've seen, some of the descriptions say this character has a standard set of moves and it's easy to use for new players. I can see a lot of the characters just kind of feeling the same, but then there are some in there that might have some critical differences. And those might be the ones I end up gravitating towards. But it is also very, very early to tell. Uh, we don't have that many raw gameplay footage out there to really analyze the stuff. But I like what I see with uh, some of these unique characters. Others might just be characters that I'd never play because they're the same.
But what do you think? Am I being too harsh? Am I being too kind? Let me know your opinions in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of Knights of Britannia. Last time on Knights of Britannia here on TGN Anime, we talked about the character customization, because you can do some light customization to the characters in the anime. You can check that video right here. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also the video at the bottom. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Glauqo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.